specifically with the European region. Well, I, I guess technically kind of not, depending on how you look at it, of course. European 1.5 happening later on tonight, a.k.a. the North American region there. So, uh, anyways, the, the actual European region qualifiers number two is, of course, going to be happening today. And I'm here to, to cast, to cast some Dota 2, uh, like I did in the first qualifiers. I had a lot of fun with that and uh, looking forward to doing some more today. So excited to be here and seeing how things kind of shape up for the European qualifiers. With that said, uh, before we get into actual casting here, their uh, round of 16 has actually started. Uh, they are currently within their matches. So um, I'm not actually going to be casting those matches just yet. I might jump into them um, but after I'm done with what I'm going to be doing here first. But what I'm starting off the stream here with is uh, something that I, I actually debuted with yesterday. And I plan to kind of keep it as a, a trend here, kind of keep going. Uh, every single stream beginning. So uh, what that is is, a, is the Breaky Daily Recap. Uh, yes, that's right. So uh, I'm actually going to be starting streams with a recap of what happened yesterday uh, in the Dota 2 scene specifically. That's how we're kicking things off here. It's a way to kind of maybe give you information for those tuning in. I also cut it out for the YouTube purposes, and so you can check it out there. Uh, just to kind of get a quick recap, ideally, of – I know there's a lot that's going on. The, the more I've been involved in the scene now in this last month and a half or so, the more I've realized, I mean, there's just so much going on across the board. So I'm doing my part to not only help you guys, you know, realize and uh, obviously uh, get information about what's going on across the board in a kind of quick way and, you know, right at you, but also for me, frankly, it's a little bit selfish because uh, this also helps me kind of keep an eye on what's actually going on and uh, w within the Dota 2 scene and as far as results and everything else. So it's kind of a win-win, I think, for, for both parties right here. Anyways, with that said, uh, as far as what happened yesterday, a little bit happened yesterday. So we'll get right into it. Uh, the first big thing that I think is kind of a, a, I want to go over here first before anything else that, that happened yesterday is actually uh, not the Boston Major qualifiers. Instead, I'm talking about the Dota pit. Uh, Dota put Season 5 took place yesterday for the CIS region, that is, the finals of the CIS region. Now, th this it was a little bit interesting of a story to this one, a little bit of drama, you could even say, perhaps. Uh, the finals were set up to be Virtus Pro versus Tim Empire. You see how they got there. VP knocking out Navi in the upper bracket, and then Empire actually knocking out Avi. Navi excuse me, in the lower bracket. They ended up facing in the finals. It was scheduled for yesterday and everything, but then from my understanding, kind of last minute, <clears throat> Empire made the point that they were not going to make it, and they chose not to it. Uh, uh, play in these finals here when, with the default time because they were competing in the Boston Major Qualifiers, of course. So it's kind of one of those situations where it's, it's like they had to choose, essentially, if they wanted to play in a finals, a best of five finals, to compete for a LAN event here for the Dota Pit Season 5 or if they wanted to play in the Boston Major Open Qualifiers and, you know, try to grind all the way through the actual Open and then the Regional, blah, blah, blah. Simply put, they got knocked out, actually, of the open qualifiers in the European region. I think it was around the 32 or even the 64 fairly earlier on. So it ended up actually being played as a result of that. They played it up after, and I didn't get the chance to watch it in the matches, but Virtus Pro apparently stomped Team Empire in three games. You see the times right there, 39 minutes. 15 minutes and then 23 minutes. I was even informed that Shen in one of those games, either game one or two, actually went a Dagon build in one of those games. I mean, it, they frankly just stomped Team Empire. So it's almost like Empire was maybe a little bit on tilt or just not necessarily really into it. But lo and behold, Virtus Pro, deservingly so, they qualify from the CIS region for the Dota Pit Season 5. So obviously, big congratulations to them. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, Empire's falls just short. Now, Empire went on to then compete in the North American Boston Major Qualifiers, like several other teams, which we'll get to uh, in just a second right here. But again, before I, I want to get into the qualifiers here, I want to also go over another event that took place uh, yesterday, that being the Dream League, of course, kicked off or continued on yesterday in what is now week three of this regular season format, whatever you want to call it right here. Eventually, the top four teams, of course, qualifying for the Dream Hack event are going to compete there for their share of the prize pool. So you see how things are looking right now. Now, this was the, these are the matches from yesterday on October 25th. Escape defeating Liquid, two games to nothing. So Escape continuing their momentum. That puts them at 6-2 and two in the group stages here in first place. Alliance then split their series 
against Navi, who Navi ended up playing their first match here of the Dream League. So they start with a split against a very solid excuse me, Alliance team that really has kind of proven that this is a new roster share it's filled with some new players, such as, of course, Limp, uh, Handskin, and Jonas and Fan joining the likes of EGM and Loda over there. But they're really making a statement here, I think, in the Stream League event. I, I got to say, the reception from me on the outside kind of felt like people were not expecting a lot out of them. They are expecting less than, you know, the former Alliance teams, perhaps. And I'm not saying this is them doing more by any means, but I, I, it's – as you know, a fan of some of their players, of course, knowing them from Hana, Hanskin, Jonas Fan of Limp specifically, uh, I'm excited to see them and Escape, for that matter, on top of the Dream League currently. So that's how things stand over there in the Dream League. And then, of course, we have the Boston Major Open Qualifiers. Now, uh, right now, the European uh, number two is actually just kicking off, but obviously I wanted to go over a couple of the other regions before we really uh, get in to that right here so real quickly going back over so we'll start with the southeast asian region i actually didn't cover this yesterday this actually did happen earlier in the week but uh kind of looked over it right here but <clears throat> wg unity the team that uh qualified here out of uh, a warriors gaming unity that qualified out of the first qualifiers for the southeast asian region you see uh WG Unity and what they've accomplished here. They, you know, recently played in the Summit 6 Southeast Asian Qualifiers. They lost to Fnatic, though, and that, you know, nothing to be ashamed of there. But before that, in the month of September, they actually did finish first place in a Pro Dota event. So, they, I mean, this is a team that's, you know, up and down as far as overall. I mean, they made a little bit of money here from a, an event uh, much earlier in the year. But it seems like that they're a solid team and kind of one of these, uh, not necessarily amateurish teams, but uh, kind of on that tier of being a, considered, you know, a solid team. And this is going to be a way for them to prove themselves within the Southeast Asian region, at least. So definitely congratulations for them. Uh, China, another region, obviously, that actually has wrapped up with their qualifiers, both one and two, as we see right here. One, Ehome X actually took the victory uh, for the uh, for the Chinese region. I'll quickly pull up their tab right here. But then over in uh, the second qualifiers that just wrapped up uh, this morning, I want to say, we look at Ehome Keen actually taking home the victory as they take out Newbie Young two games to nothing right there. So I had a couple of notes right here. Yeah, in the, in the number two qualifier for the Chinese region, VG Potential actually was in the finals of the uh, number one. However, they got knocked out in the round of 32 in the number two qualifier. So I found that a little interesting as they lost to Team ZS uh, up here, as you can see in the brackets, who then went on to lose their next match. So, you know, best of one series, obviously, you know, so much, so much can happen. So those are the Chinese region. Ehome X, take a quick look at them um, and, and their roster. I believe this is more just younger players in general. Yeah, hasn't accomplished a whole lot just yet. So this is definitely a big win for them, as I'm sure it's the same for Ehome Keen, if I'm not mistaken, as pulling them up. Yeah, pretty much a similar story it looks like as far as uh, players that are kind of on the squad of, uh, you know, moving up the ranks, you could say. So they actually finished third, fourth in the previous qualifiers, as we see here. So, um, yeah, Eom Kim, both the Eom squads actually advancing on to the uh, regional qualifiers. So we're going to have, what, three Eom teams. Eom Luminous, the only one not to advance on as far as the, the regionals. And obviously the regionals do take place. Uh, they start tomorrow for all these regions, uh, I, I do believe so. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, the Chinese region. And then, of course, we have the Americas region. Now, I say Americas very lightly, and I think a lot of people know what I'm talking about here. From my understanding, there's only actually five or six teams in this round of 16 that are actually legitimate American teams. Everyone else are actually European CIS uh, teams here. So... Again, uh, Pro Dota Gaming winning the first American qualifiers coming from the CIS region. They kind of set this trend of, you know what, maybe there's something here. And, you know, we talked about this a little bit yesterday uh, when on my on my initial opening on the uh, <clears throat> on my stream yesterday. I my emotions have gone back and forth, man. Whether or not I feel like th this is legit. I mean, I, I understand the players like do what do what they can. Go, abuse those loopholes. If you're allowed to do it, dude, I'm not blaming the players by any means. I, you know, props to the teams for finding this loophole and obviously getting second chances. Where, where I think it does get a little shady, and I think yeah, from, from what I've been reading, a lot of people agree, is the fact that these European teams, they're competing in the European qualifiers to be knocked out earlier on in that event to just say, you know what? Well, we got the American qualifiers that we can still play. 
later on in the day, and then they go and just do that anyway. So it's like, in my opinion, it should be limited. If you competed one specific region qualifier, you should not be allowed to then jump to another. That's where I think you are overstepping the boundaries. If you want to choose to compete in North American, just North American, kind of like Pro Dota did, I believe. I don't think they competed in the European. I might be wrong on that. Uh, maybe they did, but... Then, then so be it. You know, if you want to deal with that latency, if you want to deal with the, the time zone difference, and so be it. But competing in both, or one earlier in the day and then one later in the day, it just it just doesn't feel right. I mean, right? It's like you're competing in these region-specific qualifiers in both of them. That just doesn't make any sense. So I think that's where Valve should definitely look to draw the line. Whether or not they're going to be drawing the line in terms of you have to have a certain amount of players from that region. I mean, that could get a little messy, being these online events and everything like that, to really monitor that. So I don't know how much they're going to go on that line, but the idea that if you compete in one qualifier, you cannot compete in the other one for regions, I think is where they should probably look to look to draw the line right there. So anyways, uh we do see some results right here in the American qualifiers. And uh it, it's I gotta say that there's some teams in here that I'm actually kinda rooting for. Solid dudes obviously happening to be in here. That's Insania Mickey and uh, and several other former Han players that are uh, excited to see how they do. Uh, Soggy Mitts, that's actually Tralfamodor's team, I believe, that they kind of formed for these open qualifiers. They made it to the semifinals last time, only to be knocked out by Pro Dota Gaming, actually. So I'm actually excited for them to see how they do. And, of course, uh, you know, it's just across the board. Like, you've seen teams like Flipside Tactics in here. <laughs> it's just like, wait a second, what? These are the American qualifiers. But, again, that that's just how it is. So... Um, that'll be fun to see how this one shapes up later on tonight. And then, of course, we got the European number two. Uh, we kind of see how things are in the round of 16 right now. Like I said, these matches are currently happening as far as uh, who we have. So interesting to see, you know, teams like Flipside who made it to the finals of the first one. They did not even make it to the round of 32. Thus why they're playing in the American qualifiers, actually. So, uh, you know, we have uh, several different teams here in this round of 16. I guess the favorites have to be some along the lines of Friends, Imperial. It's another team that no doubt is going to be given a lot of uh, um, a lot of chances here in the European division as far as giving all the way. Zero Hoots given. That name sounds familiar as well, I want to say. We'll see what uh, what they can make happen. But, yeah, anyways, it's going to be fun, and we're going to, kind of, again, cast that here throughout the, uh, throughout the day here. So there you go, though, the daily recap. Uh, Okay, coming at you here with uh, with Breaky CPK. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, get an idea to just kind of a refreshment, if anything, in terms of what.